द स्टोरी ऑफ द बुद्धा सिद्धार्थ ऑल्सो नोन एज गौतम द फाउंडर ऑफ बुद्धिज्म वॉज बॉर्न अबाउट टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो दिस वॉज अ टाइम ऑफ रैपिड चेंज इन द लाइफ ऑफ पीपल सम किंग्स इन द महाजन अपडास व ग्रोइंग मोर पावरफुल न्यू सिटीज व डेवेलपिंग एंड लाइफ वॉज चेंजिंग इन द विलेजेस एज वेल मेनी थिंकर्स व ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दीज चेंजेस इन सोसाइटी दे ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड टू ट्राई एंड फाइंड आउट द ट्रू मीनिंग ऑफ लाइफ द बुद्धा बिलोंग टू अ स्मॉल गाना नोन एज द साक्य गाना एंड वॉज अ क्षत्रिय वेन ही वॉज अ यंग मैन ही लेफ द कम्फर्ट्स ऑफ हिज होम इन सर्च ऑफ नॉलेज He wandered for several years meeting and holding discussions with other thinkers. He finally decided to find his own path to realization and meditated for days on end under a peepal tree at Bodh Gaya in Bihar where he attained enlightenment. After that he was known as the Buddha or the wise one. He then went to Sarnath near Varanasi where he taught for the first time. He spent the rest of his life traveling on foot going from place to place teaching people till he passed away at kushinra the buddha taught that life is full of suffering and unhappiness this is caused because we have cravings and desires which often cannot be fulfilled sometimes even if we get what we want we are not satisfied and want even more or want other things the buddha described this as thirst or tanha he taught that this constant craving could be removed by following moderation in everything He also taught people to be kind and to respect the lives of others including animals. He believed that the results of our actions called karma whether good or bad affect us both in this life and the next. The Buddha taught in the language of the ordinary people Prakrit so that everybody could understand his message. Upanishads Around the time that the Buddha was preaching and perhaps a little earlier Other thinkers also tried to find answers to difficult questions. Some of them wanted to know about life after death, others wanted to know why sacrifices should be performed. Many of these thinkers felt that there was something permanent in the universe that would last even after death. They described this as the atman or the individual soul and the brahman or the universal soul. They believed that ultimately, both the atman and the brahman were one. Many of their ideas were recorded in the Upanishads. These were part of the later Vedic texts. Upanishad literally means approaching and sitting near and the texts contain conversations between teachers and students. Often ideas were presented through simple dialogues. Most Upanishadic thinkers were men, especially Brahmans and Rajas. Occasionally there is mention of women thinkers such as Gargi who was famous for her learning and participated in debates held in royal courts. Poor people rarely took part in these discussions. One famous exception was Satyak Majabala who was named after his mother the slave woman Jabali He had a deep desire to learn about reality was accepted as a student by a Brahman teacher named Gautam and became one of the best known thinkers of the time Many of the ideas of the Upanishads were later developed by the famous thinker Shankaracharya Jainism The last and 24th Tirthankara of the Jainas Vardhamana Mahavira also spread his message around this time that is 2500 years ago he was a kshatriya prince of the lichavas a group that was part of the vijji sangha at the age of 30 he left home and went to live in a forest for 12 years he led a hard and lonely life at the end of which he attained enlightenment he taught a simple doctrine men and women who wished to know the truth must leave their homes They must follow very strictly the rules of ahimsa which means not hurting or killing living beings all beings said mahavira long to live to all things life is dear ordinary people could understand the teachings of mahavira and his followers because they used prakrit there were several forms of prakrit used in different parts of the country and named after the regions in which they were used for example the prakrit spoken in magadha was known as magadhi Followers of Mahavira who were known as Jainas had to lead very simple lives begging for food they had to be absolutely honest and were especially asked not to steal also they had to observe celibacy and men had to give up everything including their clothes it was very difficult for most men and women to follow these strict rules nevertheless thousands left their homes to learn and teach this new way of life Many more remained behind and supported those who became monks and nuns providing them with food 
Jainism was supported mainly by traders. Farmers, who had to kill insects to protect their crops, found it more difficult to follow the rules. Over hundreds of years, Jainism spread to different parts of North India, and to Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. The teachings of Mahavira and his followers were transmitted orally for several centuries. They were written down in the form in which they are presently available at a place called Vilabhi, in Gujarat, about 1500 years ago. The Sangha Both the Mahavira and the Buddha felt that only those who left their homes could gain true knowledge. They arranged for them to stay together in the Sangha, an association of those who left their homes. The rules made for the Buddhist Sangha were written down in a book called the Vinay Pitaka. From this we know that there were separate branches for men and women. All men could join the Sangha. However, children had to take the permission of their parents and slaves that of their masters. Those who worked for the king had to take his permission and debtors that of creditors. Women had to take their husband's permission. Men and women who joined the Sangha led simple lives. They meditated for most of the time, and went to cities and villages to beg for food during fixed hours. That is why they were known as Bhikkhas and Bhikkhunis, the Prakrit word for renounce a beggar. They taught others, and helped one another. They also held meetings to settle any quarrels that took place within the Sangha. Those who joined the Sangha included Brahmins, Kshatriyas, merchants, laborers, barbers, courtesans and slaves. Many of them wrote down the teachings of the Buddha. Some of them also compose beautiful poems, describing their life in the Sangha. Monasteries To begin with, both Jaina and Buddhist monks went from place to place throughout the year, teaching people. The only time they stayed in one place was during the rainy season, when it was very difficult to travel. Then, their supporters built temporary shelters for them in gardens, or they lived in natural caves in hilly areas. As time went on, many supporters of the monks and nuns, and they themselves, felt the need for more permanent shelters and so monasteries were built. These were known as viharas. The earliest viharas were made of wood, and then of brick. Some were even in caves that were dug out in hills, especially in western India. Very often, the land on which the vihara was built was donated by a rich merchant or a landowner, or the king. The local people came with gifts of food, clothing and medicines for the monks and nuns. In return, they taught the people. Over the centuries, Buddhism spread to many parts of the subcontinent and beyond.